In this screencast, we will be covering abdominal ultrasound. We will cover this in three screencasts, starting with basic anatomy. The overall learning objectives for all three sessions and the hands-on workshop are as follows. At the end of this workshop, you should be able to identify the normal appearance of the liver, gallbladder, spleen, kidneys, and bowel. You should understand and be able to describe the relative echogenicity of the liver with respect to the right kidney. You should be able to identify posterior acoustic shadowing and differentiate it from posterior acoustic enhancement. And you should be able to identify and describe the appearance of calcifications, both gallstones and renal stones, as well as simple cysts. For this first screencast, we'll be focusing on normal anatomy. And at the end of this screencast, you should be able to identify the liver, gallbladder, spleen, kidneys, and bowel on ultrasound. We start with a transverse view of the abdomen just below the xiphoid process. The first organ within our field of view is the left hemi liver. We can see in the image in the right hand corner of our screen a CT which allows us to correlate the ultrasound image to the CT image. Deep to the left hemi liver, we can see the portosplenic venous system with the splenic vein highlighted with the blue arrow and then the yellow arrow on the CT. We also see the aorta deep to the portosplenic system, which can also be readily identified on CT. The most deep structure in the image is the spine. The spine can be identified by this bright hyperechoic white line and is seen here on CT. If we move slightly inferiorly but remain in a transverse orientation, the left hemi liver is still the most superficial solid organ. Deep to the left hemi liver, we now can see the pancreas. The pancreas is hyperechoic to the liver, and we can see it there on CT. If we move into a sagittal orientation, the left hemi liver remains within view as it is the most superficial solid organ in this location. We now see the celiac artery, which is arising from the aorta. These are the large vascular structures that are just deep to the left hemi liver and can be readily identified in a sagittal orientation. If we move slightly to the right of midline, we now see another large vascular structure deep to the left hemi liver. This is the inferior vena cava. Draining into the inferior vena cava from the left hemi liver, we see the hepatic vein. If we move to the left of midline, we will again see the left hemi liver, and just deep to the left hemi liver, we will see the stomach running under the margin of the liver. Notice the stomach has shadowing. That shadowing is caused by gas within the stomach, which does not allow penetration of sound waves beyond it, and therefore causes a hypoechoic appearance deep to the gas, otherwise known as shadowing. If we move into a more oblique transverse position under the costal margin, we will now see the right hemi liver. Deep to the right hemi liver, we see the spine. Notice the spine is again demarcated by a thick hyperechoic line with shadowing deep to that thick hyperechoic line. We can see the aorta just on top of the spine, and we can see the inferior vena cava, in this instance the intrahepatic portion of the inferior vena cava, 
just to the right of the aorta, also superficial to the spine. If we slightly adjust our probe and remain in a subcostal location in a somewhat oblique transverse orientation, we now see a hypoechoic fluid-filled structure come into view. That is known as the gallbladder. The gallbladder has a thin hyperechoic wall with only one layer, and it has hypoechoic internal fluid. It is just deep to the right hemiliver in the gallbladder fossa, and it divides the right hemiliver from the left hemiliver. If we orient our probe into a coronal orientation with respect to the body, we can see a transverse view of the gallbladder. Again, the gallbladder is a hypoechoic structure with a single layered echogenic wall, and deep to the gallbladder, we can see what we describe as posterior acoustic enhancement. The sound waves can pass through the simple fluid of the gallbladder without much attenuation or reflection, and therefore higher amplitude sound waves reach the soft tissues deep to the gallbladder. That allows for greater transmission of signal back to the probe, making the soft tissue deep to the gallbladder appear brighter than the adjacent soft tissue, which had sound waves that had to travel through soft tissue the entire time. If we now move into a transverse view, but are oriented on the right lateral subcostal region, we see the kidney come into view. The right kidney sits just alongside the right hemiliver, and we can also see the gallbladder within our view. If we move into a coronal orientation, we can see the liver kidney interface extremely well. Superficial to the kidney in this orientation is the right hemiliver. We then see the right kidney deep to the right hemiliver, and we can see the liver kidney interface. This liver kidney interface view is important because it helps us assess the echogenicity of the kidney relative to the liver, which we will discuss in a future screencast. In general, the kidney should be slightly hypoechoic or slightly darker than the overlying liver. Again, if we move into a transverse view, we can see the liver kidney interface, and we now have the kidney in a transverse orientation. There's the right kidney. We can again see the right hemi liver, and we can see that the kidney is similar in echogenicity or slightly hypoechoic to the overlying right hemi liver. If we move over into the left side of the abdomen, we now see a new set of organs. If we're in a sagittal view, we can see a little portion of the liver coming over to kiss the spleen. This is sometimes called kissing liver and spleen. Does not always happen in all patients, but in people with a large liver or with small body habitus, sometimes the liver will touch the spleen. We also see the spleen as this large organ in the left upper quadrant of the abdomen. Adjacent to the spleen, we can see the left kidney. Note the left kidney is hypoechoic to the spleen, and this is its normal relative echogenicity. The left kidney should always be hypoechoic to the spleen. Note we can see the diaphragm very clearly in this patient along the superior margin of the spleen and the liver. If we look at a long axis view of the left kidney, we see the central echogenic fat and the peripheral hypoechoic cortex. The left kidney sits slightly higher than the right kidney and often ribs in the chest wall 
can result in shadowing that may obscure portions of the left kidney or make the left kidney difficult to identify. If we move into a transverse view, we now see the left kidney in a transverse orientation. Notice the central echogenic renal sinus fat and the peripheral hypoechoic cortex. This is a slightly different view of the spleen. Notice the spleen's characteristic shape. Notice the diaphragm along the superior margin of the spleen. And we can see some splenic vessels arising from the splenic hilum. Now take a moment to answer this question. Which number overlies which organ? You can pause the screencast, evaluate the four images, and decide which answer is correct. In the first image, the number one overlies the liver. In the second image, the number two overlies the spleen. In the third image, the number overlies a hypoechoic structure with posterior acoustic enhancement, which is the gallbladder. In the fourth image, the number overlies the central echogenic fat of the kidney. Notice the surrounding hypoechoic cortex. In summary, the liver is the most superficial solid organ. You can see it best in the midline upper abdomen and in the right upper quadrant. The gallbladder lies just deep to the liver. It divides the right and left hemiliver. It's a hypoechoic fluid filled structure and has characteristic posterior acoustic enhancement. There are right and left kidneys. The right kidney abuts the liver and the left kidney abuts the spleen. And the kidneys have a characteristic central area of echogenic renal sinus fat with a hypoechoic cortex. The spleen, which can often look very similar to the liver, is located in the left upper quadrant. And that is one of the best ways to distinguish it on a single ultrasound image from the liver because the spleen and liver echogenicity are very similar. So make sure you are always paying attention to any probe orientation or other clues if you are given a question about the spleen versus the liver.